Within our darkest night, you kindle a fire that never dies away, never dies away. Within our darkest night, you kindle the fire that never dies away. Within our darkest night, you kindle the fire that never dies away, never dies away. Within our darkest night, you kindle the fire that never dies away. darkest night you kindle the fire that never dies away never dies away within our darkest night you kindle the fire that never dies away dies away. Good morning and a warm welcome to morning prayer from St Michael and All Angels Church in Beckwithshaw. It's good to be with you. Today we remember particularly Bishop Leo of Rome most famous for having been the person who started the papacy. So we remember today Leo and all those who pioneer ways forward for us. And as we are in this time of lockdown in England, we also remember those who are feeling that darkest night and pray for God's light to be with them. You're welcome to join in this service of morning prayer by following the words in the daily prayer app available for smart devices or by looking on the Church of England website for daily prayer. You're welcome to join in those parts in bold or if you prefer just to listen and to soak in that presence of God. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city, where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. 
Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm number 24, the second of the two psalms offered. You're invited to join in with me in saying the even verses if you wish. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Just, such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading for today continues in the book of Daniel in chapter 5, verse 1. King Belshazzar made a great festival for a thousand of his lords, and he was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring in the vessels of gold and silver that his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the vessels of gold and silver that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the kings and his lords, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood and stone. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. The king was watching the hand as it wrote. Then the king's face turned pale and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. The king cried aloud to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans and the diviners. And the king said to the wise men of Babylon, whoever can read this writing and tell me its interpretation shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around his neck and rank third in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar became greatly terrified, and his face turned pale, and his lords were perplexed. The queen, when she heard the discussion of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting hall. The queen said, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts terrify you, or your face grow pale. There is a man in your kingdom who is endowed with the spirit of the holy gods, in the days of your father, he was found to have enlightenment, enlightenment, understanding, and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and diviners, because an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in this 
Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Ends on a cliffhanger. And so, our reflection today from Rosalind Brown. This incident, which gives us the phrase, the writing is on the wall, occurred when a new king, Belshazzar, was viceroy. Whereas Nebuchadnezzar had taken the sacred temple vessels from Jerusalem, Belshazzar put them to profane use, acting blasphemously in Hebrew eyes by using Jewish sacred items to become drunk and offer libations to his idols. We can imagine the scene, candlelight flickering, suddenly a hand appearing, writing on the wall, appalled silence. Belshazzar was terrified. In his fear, he promised the enormous reward of third place in the kingdom. As usual, the Babylonian wise men were stumped and Daniel was not on the scene. It was up to the queen, possibly Belshazzar's mother, and therefore with a longer memory, to come to the rescue. She referred to Daniel initially by his Hebrew name, perhaps thereby acknowledging the superiority of the God he served over the Babylonian deities. Above all, before describing his skills in interpreting dreams and solving riddles and problems, she referred to his excellent spirit and knowledge. His character was primary, and we were told in chapter 1 it was honed as a young exile who remained faithful to his God in training and then throughout his precarious existence in the court. Skills were useful, but it was his character that the Queen noticed first. And so we continue with the responsory that follows the second of the readings. Please do join in the lines in bold. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. And so we come to the Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus, which I invite you to say with me, including the refrain at the beginning and end, and to stand with me if you wish. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So let us pray.
And our prayers today come from those offered by Susan Sayers. Let us pray to the great God of heaven who stands among us now. Heavenly God, as the earthly part of your church, we come before you with our thanks and praise for your living presence among us, even in the darkness of the present time. In our worship together and in our separate times of prayer, we come to you. We thank you for bringing the joy of heaven to earth as you lift us into your presence. Look with mercy on our world, O oh God, as we work out policies and target needs and misunderstand one another's cultures and get carried away with excesses and the taste of power. We pray particularly this day for the people of the United States of America, for the turmoil that exists there following the election, for those who would seek to lead and those who seek to follow. Lord, bring calm and peace and a good and just way forward. We also give thanks for those who are called to serve as leaders in our own country. We give thanks for their considerations, their willingness to be open to being changed, and their desire to serve the people. May our waking, working, eating, relaxing and sleeping become a pattern coloured and lit by your love, even as we remain separated in our own homes during this period of lockdown. May our homes reflect your love. Our ways of working be energised by your love. And our relationships, which do continue, glow with your love. To those who are losing heart, give your heavenly encouragement and patience. To the young and vulnerable, give heavenly protection. To the ill and damaged, give heavenly healing and inner peace as you touch our lives with yours. Lord, we pray for all those who are finding this period of lockdown particularly hard. For those who are still awaiting operations or treatments. For those who have got the virus and are suffering at home or in hospital. And for those for whom this lockdown has meant redundancy or lack of useful employment. We pray for all those who are over busy, for teachers and university lecturers seeking still to educate even in these most difficult times. We pray for their safety and for their rest when they can. Knowing that physical death is not the end of life, but the beginning of a new dimension, we recall our loved ones who have died and commend them to your eternal keeping. Lord, you know the names that are on our hearts when we say those words. We pray you would continue to bring us comfort in the knowledge that our loved ones who have died are truly with you. We pray particularly this day for Peter Staples, for his family, and particularly his wife Margaret, 
as they continue to come to terms with his death. Lord, bring them comfort and peace. Our collect prayer for today. God our Father, who made your servant Leo strong in the defence of the faith, fill your church with the spirit of truth, that guided by humility and governed by love, she may prevail against the powers of evil. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for this morning prayer. We will return again tomorrow at 9am on Remembrance Day for an act of morning, work, morning prayer at 9am and then an act of remembrance at around 11am. May your day be blessed and may God go with you. <laughs>